still a lot of confusion and misinformation spreading on mixing vaccines after recent comments from the World Health Organization. Canadian officials maintain it is safe for first and second doses. Here to help break it down further is pharmacologist and co-founder of South Asian Health Network, Sabina Vohra Miller. Good morning to you, Sabina. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. Let's work through this confusion. Uh, what do you think is at the, at, at the, at the understanding of, of what uh, the World Health Organization said? And how can we make sense? How can you help to ease uh, people's concerns? Yeah, it does all stem from a miscommunication. It was actually part of a broader question that Dr. Swaminathan, who's the chief scientist at the WHO, she was essentially asked a question as to whether boosters um, are recommended at this point. And, you know, as we heard Dr. Yaffe just mention, um, you know, we are not looking at boosters at this point. And so Dr. Swaminathan essentially responded back saying that, you know, we're in a, in a position where people are doing what they want with respect to boosters. And, you know, her comment really was about those who are fully vaccinated and who want to get third or fourth doses of the vaccines. Um, and so this and so her comment had specifically to do with that. Unfortunately, that one sentence was taken completely out of context. Mm -hmm. It was actually part of a broader quest and it was a 10 minute long conversation. And that one sentence was pulled out um, where she talked about, you know, how individuals should not be making these decisions. And in fact, people should be following their local public health guidance guidance, which is exactly what we're doing here in Canada. And it's important because the WHO looks at the entirety of the world, whereas in Canada, our, you know, our health bodies, such as the Public Health Agency of Canada, NACI, they're making recommendations that are specific for the Canadian population, understanding the context of what's happening here with our, with our population. And her recommendation was to follow your public health guidance, which we are here in Canada. We've been hearing of uh, people showing up to get vaccinated and hearing that the second dose is, uh, differs from their first. What advice do you have to those people or to anyone who might know anyone who's hesitant? Absolutely. So unequivocally, you know, getting a different vaccine for your second dose, there is absolutely no concern with that whatsoever. You know, when you're looking at, in fact, mixing and matching AstraZeneca with an mRNA vaccine, we now have really good data to suggest that, in fact, this um, might actually be advantageous in terms of, you know, offering better efficacy. Um, there's no concerns with safety. And it's the same with even mixing two mRNA vaccines. You know, what you're getting with the two mRNA vaccines you're basically making very identical um, antibodies to both of them. There is really no apprehension there, no concerns with respect to mixing and matching vaccines. And I cannot stress that being fully vaccinated, especially on the heels of Delta, which is now majority of the cases here in Ontario, being fully vaccinated is so critically important to ensure that you're protected from the Delta variant. And what about for people who are, uh, you know, showing up to these vaccine clinics or, or perhaps they're waiting um, for a Pfizer shot um, since Moderna is the one that's being handed out more commonly now? What advice do you have to, to those people who want to wait? Uh, you know, in my opinion, I think that every day that you delay a vaccine, you're putting yourself at risk. And not only are you putting yourself at risk, but now there's data to show that if you're vaccinated, you're actually offering indirect benefits to um, your family members and those who are unvaccinated in your house, such as children under the ages of 12. So being fully vaccinated is so important. Um, I would personally not recommend delaying your vaccine. Pfizer and Moderna are both highly efficacious vaccines. There's no concerns with safety over there whatsoever um, and so if you go into a vaccine clinic you've gotten Pfizer first and you're and you know they're they're offering Moderna my recommendation would be to accept it and get vaccinated so you can have your two dose summer uh, real quick right there I want to ask you about vaccine passports uh, what are your thoughts on that that's a tricky question, and I'll be honest. I think the first thing we need to do is make sure that we don't leave any stone unturned with respect to education and removing barriers. I think vaccine passports helps for those who are complacent, who are, mm -hmm. you know, they want to get the vaccine, but they haven't yet quite made the time. Um, but I think if you actually dig down and you look at the causes, the root causes as to why people are not getting vaccinated, very often it has to do with barriers or to accessibility, especially for racialized, um, marginalized communities. And mm -hmm. this would further marginalize them. Um, and the second is for those who are distrustful of government and health agencies, this would actually push them further away. So there is <clears throat> some concern about it actually causing 
more vaccine hesitancy in the long Got run. It. So I think, yeah. you know, I think, you know, we're at a point where we have to be looking at every possible avenue to make sure that we're getting our uh, getting up in numbers to achieve herd immunity. But I think we have to be careful on how we do and we don't want to make sure that it doesn't um, end up causing us more issues, you know, downstream. Sabina Bohra Miller, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All the best to you. Thank you. Take care. Time now, 8.12 a.m. Let's get a look at your traffic. Good morning, Stephanie.